Hi, my name is Father Rayapa. Today I'm going to talk about a, an important uh, component of a living organism, that is adaptation. You see, what is life? Life is defined by three words, consumption, reproduction, and adaptation. So the first two things every life on earth eats, consumes. So every life depends on eating. By eating they grow up. So all species too including humans. And reproduction, the second one. Every life reproduces. It's about selfish gene. You must have heard about the famous book written by Richard Dawkins in 1970s, The Selfish Gene, very famous book in which Richard Dawkins says that every organism is selfish, including humans. We are also selfish, but humans at the same time, they can be unselfish too. Only one organism can uh, be unselfish, that is humans. That's amazing. Every creature is selfish. They can't be unselfish and humans can be selfish at the same time, unselfish. So that is the beauty of our creation. So we can love other creatures. We can appreciate other organisms, snakes, we can say they are beautiful. Crocodiles, even though they are obnoxious, we say they are beautiful because we are unselfish. But tiger or lion, they are not going to appreciate humans. If you go to their habitat, <laughs> it's pretty much sure that they're going to kill us. They're going to, not going to say humans are beautiful. Even crocodile, if you go near to him, he's not going to say, hey, you appreciated me, you told me that I am beautiful, but I'm not going to tell you are beautiful, I'm going to eat you, I'm going to bite you. See, they're all selfish. But humans can be unselfish. That is our role. So far we have never understood that. We thought we are also selfish. All the problems of environment today, global warming, climate change, is perpetrated because we are selfish. Because of self-interest, we exploited Mother Earth. We can be unselfish. We can show compassion and mercy, empathy. So we can love planet Earth and we can sacrifice too. Our lives we can sacrifice for the sake of other creatures. And we can serve them. We can conserve them and we can love them. That is the quality, that is the a different trait has been evolved in humans. So that is the window where we need to work hard. That is the place we should establish connection with the natural world. So far we have never established any connection with the natural world because of our self-interest habits. When selfishness comes, we destroy. We think we are the most important species. I am important, my family is important. We go individualistic. But when unselfishness comes, we see the common good. We see the purpose of all creation. We see the purpose of all creatures and we can see the intrinsic value in creation. In selfish mode, we can see only instrumental value of every creature, animal or a plant. As long as they are useful to humans, we value them, we use them, we exploit them. But in unselfish mode, we see the common good. We also see part of creation. We don't see ourselves as we are the superior species, we are special species, we don't see that. We see as a relation, we belong. We also see the fact that we can't exist without them. So we include ourselves in the web of relationships. That is what we have to understand. So the reproduction, we can produce our babies at the same time not exponentially, not beyond the carrying capacity of the earth. 
not the beyond the carrying capacity of a nation, not beyond the carrying capacity of the ecosystem. So in the unselfish mode, we reduce our population and we become compatible with other create, creation, other parts of creation. So in the definition of life, this too, we understand somewhat better about consumption and reproduction. But the third one is absolutely opaque, <coughs> zero. We don't even talk about it. We don't understand it. There is no school system which teaches about adaptation. So it's a very important component of a living creature. Every organism has to play the role of adaptation. Otherwise they will perish, they will disappear. So adaptation has to be taught to the children. It's an environmental education. We need to educate our parents first and then the children. Today, global warming and climate change, we are not talking anymore consumption and reproduction. We shouldn't do that. Actually, we are still talking about it, isn't it? But I think we should be concentrating on adaptation. That is what we are missing. We are missing the whole point. In this devastation, the planet Earth is destroyed. And how are we going to adapt to the present situation? We can't normally do the same things of consuming and reproducing normally as usual. Business as usual can't go further. We need to talk about adaptation, stop consumption and stop reproduction or at least reduce consumption and reduce reproduction and concentrate and focus our attention on adaptation. There are different varieties of adaptation. In this segment I would talk about the first form of adaptation. What is the first form of adaptation? And there is also second, there is the third. I'm going to make three segments. This is the first segment I'm making, adaptation one. I'm going to talk about the first uh, perspective of adaptation, which is, in a physical sense, an animal or a plant can adapt by adjusting to its immediate environment. For instance, by changing its temperature or metabolism with an increase in altitude, increase in temperature, to the environmental changes. So an yeah, animal or a plant, they can adjust to the environment. For example, let us take humans. We are living in a, a temperate environment. The temperatures are comfortable, maybe let us say 28 degrees Celsius. Because of global warming and climate change, the temperatures can increase to 36 degrees or 40 degrees Celsius. Our human body has the capacity to adapt because there is a thermostat built in our system. We shouldn't go and put a fan or an air condition. That is, we are ignoring, ignoring the environment. We shouldn't do that. That is what we have been doing. The increase of temperature can be called as a limiting factor. That is the word. It limits uh, an organism's capacity to, to reproduce more and more. It puts a tab and it tells you it's very becoming very hot. Please don't produce more children. But we ignore every limiting factor. That is the biggest problem. We breach all the limiting factors. But our body can adjust. We should give a chance to our own body. Human body can exist minus sub-zero temperatures all the way to even 60-65 degrees Celsius. We can adapt. So we should allow our bodies to adapt naturally. So through adapting, 
we are allowing our own uh, mutation to take effect. If we are living in 60 degrees Celsius, our mutation, our cells change, change, change. At last they create a trait. Suddenly, genes are available. Now you pass to your children and the children inherit those traits from you because you produce mutations, the advantages, mutations which is our children can live comfortably in the 65 degrees Celsius environment. We may disappear. We can't continue our existence because it's too hot for us. But our children can exist because you pass the mutation to the next generation. So they will live happily. 65 degrees means for them it's not hot. For them it is temperate. It's a cool temperature for them. So we never give a chance for the natural selection to do the job. We always tamper. We always obstruct the natural processes. All these limiting factors can be naturally met by human species. Hey, plants are doing, animals are doing. Remember there are so many animals in this habitat, today global warming, climate change, putting pressure on all animals and plants, but still they are thriving because they are adapting. They don't go by air conditioned machine, animals by air conditioned fit in a forest, they live comfortably. No, plants can never go anywhere. At least animals can go to another environment, adapt themselves. But plants can't even move, they are static. But they can adapt. Sometimes they can bring, they can become a big species, strong species. Their metabolism changes. Even a weak grass can become a tough grass because the metabolism changes because of the environment. When the environment changes, the metabolism changes. The whole structure also changes sometimes. And our DNA and our cells have the ability to produce solutions to every limiting factor, every problem that is posed in the environment. So I'm afraid we have not allowed our bodies to adapt. So we are the first obstacle. So we should allow. So today, we should educate our children. It's quite normal. It's okay, environment changes. Whether it's because of human activity or because of natural factors, environment changes. Environment is not the same. When you examine the history of our planet, it has changed so many times. But still, life adopted to every situation. Life came out as a winner. Anything throw at life, life makes use of it and it makes and takes it as an advantage and then life flourishes. It becomes more complex, it becomes more strong, it becomes more survival of the fittest. So human beings can become survival of the fittest if you allow the natural processes and you adapt to the natural processes. Don't bring uh, air conditioned machines, um, don't bring any fans. We can able to live naturally. So we need to teach to our children. First of all, we should learn that it is okay. What is happening today, global warming and climate change, it's okay. You need not be schizophrenic about it. So now we become hyperactive. I mean, life has seen all this. It's quite normal. And only one thing, we have to respond naturally, not artificial. When you bring air conditioned machine, you put cool air in your room, but outside you're making hot. So the environment is now becoming hot. For example, ice, the people those who live in northern and southern hemisphere, the ice is a limiting factor. People can adapt with dresses or with some uh, uh, wool, woolen clothes and so on. But now what they do, they don't allow the natural processes, natural way of dealing with the environment. They go and bring oil, diesel, natural gas and heat inside the house and outside it is being polluted. 
Prayer takes so much of energy to keep the houses warm and comfortable. So we are destroying our environment. If you could use sweaters, woolen clothes, if you could burn some wood, it's a natural way of coping up with the environment. And your metabolism changes naturally. And through mutations, you will be able to live even in a colder climates. And when you pass your genes to the next generation, probably they can live even without sweaters, even without any warm clothes. And they can live happily in a colder climates. So it is only through education we can learn about it. Through studying ecosystem, by studying organisms and plants, how they adapt, we can also learn. And we never learn from ecosystems. Ecosystems are there to provide example for us. They tell us, this is the way you live. Don't live artificially, live naturally. Take it easy. The environment will help you. And we can flourish. So this is the first uh, explanation I'm giving on the first part of adaptation. So the next segment I'm going to talk about the second uh, important element of adaptation and then the third segment is coming up and the third type of adaptation. So thank you and have a nice day and God bless. Bye.